Hey, this video is part two on our equilibrium constant uh, concept overview. Um, and in this video, we'll be looking at the comparison between um, several weak acids and a strong acid, just to try to gather a better understanding for um, equilibrium constants and what they mean, like what the number actually encompasses. So what you can deduce from looking just looking at an equilibrium constant so as as a precursor we're just i'm just going to write this over here in the top right um that just remember this when we're looking at these um these different acids that the equilibrium constant for concentration is the product concentration of product over the concentration of reactant so it's a, so again it's a ratio of how much product you have divided by how much reactant um so let's look at um a strong acid okay so like HCl and this will fully dissociate into H plus plus Cl minus so there's seven strong acids and what's what makes them all strong is they fully dissociate in water so there is no there is no back arrow here Okay, there is this does not happen. Okay, it's only a one one sided arrow. So essentially this dissolves to completion into ions. So when this is done, this will be zero percent and this will be a hundred percent. So <clears throat> let's apply the equilibrium constant expression to this, and then you'll have um if we if we tried to calculate a equilibrium constant we would have some number some number over and our reactant amount at equilibrium so if we put this in like an ice table or something so there would be change so change this would be minus all of it okay and this would be plus all of it so at equilibrium this is some number and then this would be zero and we would have some number divided by zero or undefined so I believe this is actually measurable, but it's so large that essentially it goes to completion. But I technically, I think this is actually measurable, um, the, the amount of ions. Um, so this is what makes them strong. There's only one arrow that you can draw for that. So how about the whole world of weak acids? Well, if you have, um, let's, let's vary some strength of uh, weak acids. So here's chlorous acid, HC... HClO2. Um, as you know, uh, perchloric and chloric are actually strong. Those are two of the, of the seven strong. Um, this one, the dissociation would go like this if I wrote it out H plus plus ClO minus, ClO2 minus one. And we use a little subscript A to represent the equilibrium constant for an acid. Um, and this value is 1.1 times 10 to the negative second. So let's compare that to, this is chlorous acid, and let's compare that to a couple other acids. So let's take acetic acid. Okay. And here's my ion, my ions. And the Ka for this equilibrium is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, and now let's take hydro cyanic acid. And this one would be if we wrote the equ the equilibrium expression, we would have this plus H plus uh, plus CN minus the cyanide cyanide ion. And uh, this equilibrium constant would be four point nine times 10 to the negative 10th. So let's take a look and see what this these numbers are telling us. So at equilibrium, chlorous acid, this one has a higher Ka value. So it still favors, predominantly favors the molecule side because K is less than one. So in this, we have a fraction here. So we have decimal point zero one one. Okay, so our our, our our ratio would be our uh, would be one over let's say uh, almost a hundred 
or so. Okay, so what that means is, and remember, this is our concentration of product over concentration of reactant here. Okay, so this means our reactant amount is almost 100 to 1, the ratio here. Um, yet, when you compare it to... Yet when you compare it to these other acids, it's actually it's actually a stronger weak acid than these other two. And so let's look and see why. Let's take a, a closer look here. Okay, so the, the ratio here would be one over about fifty-six thousand. So what that tells us is, and again, this is this is product over reactant. So again, this tells us that, yes, this does ionize. Like some of this molecule will break up into ions. But how much, like out of what you started with, barely any. So it's like one, um, or actually you would get two ions out of this. But so you would get... If, if we just looked at sides, left or right and left sides, so product and reactant, you would get one of these dissociations for every 56,000 uh, molecules of acetic acid. Um, and then this acid, so some of it does go over there, and it is classified as an acid, but at equilibrium, we see that barely any of it is actually ionized. Okay, and this makes sense. I mean, in low enough concentrations, you can eat this stuff. It's in, like, salad dressing and, and what have you. So um, let's take a look at a uh, hydrocyanic acid, and then the situation gets even more uh, telling of how weak exactly this one is. If we, if we tried to put this in, like, a ratio, this number, which is essentially what it is, then we would get 1 over about two billion so be one over two let's see and one two three four five six seven eight nine zeros okay and then again this means product over reactant so every time this this goes over here for every one of those there's two billion HCN molecules. So that's how weak. So this is the ion side. This is the ion side or product side. And this is the molecule side, the intact molecule. So yes, this does make ions and it is measurable. You would it would be a lower pH than seven, meaning it would be um it would definitely be an acid. Um but we see that um, at, at equilibrium, you have way, way, way more products than you do uh, reactants in this case. So this is a good, uh, I think this is a good video to review. Um, if you ever, if you ever get a little lost on on the the overall concept of equilibrium and this whole concept of like which side is favored at equilibrium. All right, so that's the end of our uh, tutorial.